this is the Spider M1 Pro laser engraver. It's compact, portable, and has an infinite wide-axis laser engraver and the cutting ability, which makes it easily stand out from the flooding market of frame laser engravers we've already seen. But as a pro laser engraver enthusiast, I'm skeptical about the Spider M1 and I have numerous questions like its engraving accuracy on different materials and the stability. Lots of crowdfunding projects have that issue and they crush all the time. How about the usability? What software does it use? And so on and so on. After testing it heavily for several days, I'll cover every bit of those points. By the way, I also got the Spider M1 Max. The brand said to me that they haven't seen this model to any other influences. I'm the first one to test out. Wow, that's going to be fun. The video is going to be long, but I have marked the timeline for each section, so you can just jump to the one you want to watch, or watch the whole thing and even give this video a thumbs up. That would be awesome, because I can earn more as revenue. All <laughs> jokes said, let's get started. Starting with the design, we have a leather handle on the top. That reminds me of my dad's old suitcase. There's also a power key and a 2.4 inch color screen beside it. We'll get to that in a second. And the two sides are the fan and the foam for dealing with the smoke while it's operating. Now to the front. We have the Spare M1 logo on the top left corner. Then the transparent shield to let you see through where your engravings at when running. On the right are the power port and the port for connecting with the computer. Whilst on the bottom are the four rubber wheels to let it move freely on flight ground. Then the laser head. The yellow shield is magnetic by the way. Inside the slot is the X-axis guide rail and two shafts connecting with the wheels. The M1 Max has the same design but is larger in size. I list the exact dimension of the two on the screen. You can check them out. That's the design of the Spider M1 Pro and Max. They also have the basic M1 version, which has the same design as the Pro, but with a 5 watts laser head. Both the Pro and Max have a 10 watts laser head. To use the Spider M1 is actually easier and less complicated than a normal frame laser engraver because it doesn't require installation as it comes all pre board. Just place the M1 on a flat surface, insert an SD card, connect it to power, press the power key on the top and the screen will light up. Speaking of the screen, let me introduce a little bit more of it. There are three main interfaces. The first one is the control. You can move the unit by tapping the arrows. Also, you can preview the laser status there. The second one is the set. You can choose language or connect Wi-Fi there. Third is the sculpture, in which it shows all the printing files that's stored on the SD card. You can click the file there to print immediately. Pretty much like a 3D printer, isn't it? Now we connect the machine to Wi-Fi. Select the Wi-Fi you want to connect and input the password. As you probably noticed, the screen is a little bit of work with to operate because it's too small. But I'm glad once you connect to your Wi-Fi, you don't need to interact with it anymore if you don't want to. Once it's connected, it will show you the IP address. Please bear this in mind as you are going to use that to connect other devices later. There are three ways to connect with the Spider M1. You can either use a cable or just connect it to the phone or laptop. For the latter, you have to make sure your devices are connected to the same Wi-Fi. Download and install the app MKS Laser from the Google Play or App Store. Click the chain icon on the top left corner, input the IP address that showed on the M1 and connect. That's how to connect with your phone. Still, I will walk you through a little bit more of the app. You can draw your own works or take a picture and add it to the way you want. Remote control to adjust its position, Teresa. Interestingly though, I found many lazy engraver apps have many functions in common. I guess they're all based on the same open source code or something. Anyway, this video is not a tutorial video. If you really want to learn how to use it properly, I suggest you watch some tutorials online. It shouldn't be difficult, it just takes some time. If you want to have even more features or use this machine in a professional way, definitely try it with the Lightbird. Yes, it's compatible with it. For this software, it's widely accepted by nearly all laser engraver users. It's powerful and practical, basically everything you can think of, it has. Here, I wouldn't even dare to teach you how to use it as I believe many of you are much better with it than me. Just one thing for laser cutting, which is work speed to 250, and 100 to the laser power. If for laser engraving, then 3000 speed and 30 power settings should handle most materials. Speaking of that, let's finally check some of the engravings I've tested. First, of course, you might want to know 
What on earth its engraving ability is for extra long and extra wide pictures. After all, this is the biggest happy claims. I use the M1 Pro to engrave one 200 by 700 millimeter picture and M1 Max to engrave one 400 by 440 millimeter hour picture. In order to prove that I wasn't faking the engravings, I literally used several cameras to record the whole engraving process in time-lapse mode. Man, this was almost killing me, especially that our picture I spent almost a night because my camera battery couldn't last that long and I kept switching and charging. So at least I deserve a subscription. I am surprised with the engraving quality. It is very clear with smooth edges details are all kept. Most importantly, there's no jack lines there that might be caused by track deviation as it's sliding through. Just check out this 700mm engraving. As you may think, this slide engraving isn't something new because we've really seen that on the laser picker too. But one thing this Spectre M1 is capable of while the laser picker cannot is its laser cutting ability while sliding. Speaking of cutting, for the 10 watts laser power on the M1 Pro and Max, I tested that it can cut wood with a max thickness of 10 mm in 5 repeats. That's quite amazing! By the way, I saw some of you guys are caring about the smoke absorption in the M1 Facebook group. Well, I would say it's much better than most other laser engravers thanks to its fan and foam design, but still suggest you put a fan beside the machine when cutting. Overall, from my days of test with the Spider M1 Pro and Max, I think they definitely lived up to the hype regarding its infinite work area engraving. I also tried normal sized engravings on the M1 Pro. When you are using that, you have to use their plates to form the frame and put the M1 on it. The footpad is adjustable, just in case your surface is not flat. They also offer a small riser, so when you put your object on it, you can adjust the height of the object to let it be parallel or a little bit lower than the left or right plate. Then you are ready to engrave. I tried different picture types on the wood. You can achieve this kind of effect by selecting different options in the light burn software. Crazy details, aren't they? I also tried different materials like paperboard, leather, electroplated aluminum alloy plate, even one 304 stainless steel plate. The result speaks for itself. For which material the M1 can or cannot handle, there is a very detailed list on its crowdfunding page, which you can find the link in the description. Oh, just in case if you're wondering if the M1 can engrave cylindrical items, the answer I got from them is that they are developing and soon they will be available. Good to know that. As a tech reviewer, I was lucky enough to see and try those simple early consumer laser engravers from years ago to what has evolved now, still, each year I see new manufacturers join the race and compete with those big brands with new form factor and innovative ideas. They are fearless and put lots of effort in. The first thing for that is I will always encourage and support, even though they are new and probably scammers. We need such innovators and pioneers. I think at the first laser engraver from this company, I think it did a fairly good job. It has accurate engravings, especially the size of the engravings which no one else can match. You can just print such big pictures in one pass, saving you lots of trouble. It is easy to use, no need to assemble, you don't even need to adjust laser focusing, just put the object on the unit and you're good to go. Though you do need to spend some time to study its software to get the best result, but that's the best thing of it. The results for you will be truly unique and memorable. It's stable. If it wasn't stable, I wouldn't be able to test so many engravings and materials in just three or four days. I didn't even experience one single interrupt when I was testing. As a prototype, that's quite amazing. And for me, the bad thing is it's compact size, so I can easily store it on even the smallest shelf so my wife wanna finally and question me where did I spend all my pocket money. Oh, speaking of the price, that's another highlight. Starts at only 599 US dollars on Kickstarter. It is definitely one of the most budget laser engravers I've used compared to those easily costing a few thousand dollars. And I think it's definitely worth every penny. And if you are interested in it, please check the link in the description and buy the project now. I'm Sammy, we'll see you in the next one.